Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. so nice they named it twice ladies and gentlemen there she is will da, durst da, da, da. lovely and attractive and uh, talented and uh funny and yeah. red-haired and uh, <laughs> orange. Uh, uh, orange, or, or, is yeah. that orange yeah it's supposed to be orange you know it's got the orange with the little dark highlights the orange oh, and that's black very and nice yeah. that's yeah. very nice now if you don't color it is it gray of course. Oh, because my wife, Marjorie, decided to go full gray. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends did you know, mm. during during this whole pandemic thing. I just decided, you know what, the heck with it. And because uh, a few tried to do things out of a box. And oh, my, what an adventure that was. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, me and, and baseball and the San Francisco Giants. And as soon as I could get my hair redone. I rushed off and went, you know what? It's just not going to come out the gray that I want quite yet. Yeah, right. So, you know, because my mother and my grandmother had this really nice salt and pepper thing going yeah, on for yeah, a while. Well, well she's got yeah. gone all gray, and she's, so ha- she's kind of happy with it, you know? Yeah, I'm sure I will be, too. It's a know, liberation someday. from all that coloring that you have to do, which is not a small, easy process. No. No, no, and if you pay somebody professionally, it's not cheap either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, what I thought I'd do is call you, and we can get an update on Will and on his condition and the finances involved and uh, the money you still need and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And all of that kind of thing. Well, Will is in great spirits. Mm-hmm. He is, uh, he's, he's, he's thriving, you know, mentally. He's doing okay. Yeah. He's getting bored being where he is, and I can't blame him. It, it it's today's the seventh, I believe. Mm-hmm. So that makes nineteen months since he's been home, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. that's like a year and a half and some. So, uh, but he's hanging in there. He knows he has work to do to get here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a little frustrating time with. Uh, the so-called healthcare system that we have here in this country. Mm-hmm. He has timed out of his physical therapy sessions. Timed uh, out? Timed out as far, well, the where he was going is not a permanent rehab facility. It's a temporary rehab facility. Mm-hmm. So his therapist had dragged it out and kind of like fudged on sessions. So he was able to get a lot more than he probably should have yeah. with this whole you know medical insurance thing but uh it's his boss told him you know what he can't he can't come here anymore because we've done all we can here for him and obviously they haven't because he still can't stand up on his own and he still can't walk and that's the whole thing is, is it my is it, from what i've heard what happens is the government says if by a certain time you haven't made a certain bunch of benchmarks or whatever they quit covering it right or if they find out that you have been giving more rehab than they think the patient should have they'll actually ask the facility for money back really yes yeah which kind of sucks yeah uh because we we have two different facilities for his uh, different uh, uh your arm Your upper body is OT, occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to one place for the OT, and we were going to another place for the PT, physical therapy is your lower body. And and the lower body is also sexual therapy, too. (laughs) Thank you, Marvin (laughs) Gaye. Yeah, Yeah, at, at, at this point, you know, I would just be happy if he could stand up on his own and, uh, you know, get to the walking later. But his uh, his arm is doing great with the OT and mm-hmm. with the place that we go to there 
and that is a hospital setting and he's an outpatient type thing mm -hmm. so they they can fudge as long as they want right uh, as, as far as insurance goes but the other clinic is, is was uh, like a also an outpatient but it's, it's a rehab clinic it's not a real long-term right. type place how, so, how they, well how how far is he along is he he, uh, he seemed to say his hand has improved his hand is very much improved. He can move his arm, kind of, mm -hmm. and uh, his hand is really good. You know, you know, this sounds very frustrating because you're saying he can move his hand, kind of, and how? And we're 19 months into this, and he can move his hand, kind of. Kind of. Well, he can move his hand and his arm. The thing of it is, is when you're in bed for as long as he was not moving, it's your shoulder muscles that go. Mm-hmm. And, and they kind of sag and there's a displacement and you have to get the shoulder muscles working again because that's where your arm movement comes from. Yeah. So they've been working on his shoulder and he can move his arm, but he's not at the point yet where he could actually put his arm down and put weight on it to, to help himself okay. move. Yeah. And yeah. you kind of need that if you're going to start using a walker, you need both arms and, and that kind of a balance thing. Yeah. And they've done some standing, but he can't stand up without help because his left knee still won't straighten all the way. So he, he's got that going on. And the hamstring muscle and the calf muscle are still pretty tight. And he's had uh, shots of Botox mm -hmm. in, in those muscles to help loosen it up. A so bit. really good looking muscles now, huh? Oh yeah. The <laughs> leg is so smooth looking. It's really, really nice. It's funny when people mention that about Botox, they, they forget to, uh, to remember that Botox was invented for an entirely different purpose than doing away with wrinkles. Right. You know. Right. We know, and we know Dr. Botox, the, uh, the man who invented the Botox thing is actually our dermatologist. Because his, uh, well, his name isn't Mr. Botox. I no, no, it's a do Dr. Richard Glogau, and he's, he's worldwide. He's known all over the place, and yeah. he's been our dermatologist for over 30 years, yeah. and yet maybe we see him once or twice. But it's, because been, it's, been, used for, it's been used for other things like this, for instance. Like this, yes. Uh, it it helps uh, what they call the elasticity of your muscles. Yeah. And his muscles are so tight, again, because the second time he was in ICU, he was there for six weeks. And there was no physical therapy or any sort of thing involved there because they were trying to save his life from the dang infection. Yeah. So uh, your muscles are just naturally not going to be working well, anymore. Let me let me ask you, backtrack a little bit on this, because you mentioned that he had an infection. Uh, a lot of things happen when you have a stroke. A lot of things happen that you don't think will happen like what you're mentioning now, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, problems with, uh, uh, well, what were you talking about? The uh, <laughs> Well, his, his muscles, well, you're, you're in bed for yeah, such yeah, a long muscles. time that your muscles aren't yeah. moving at all. And if you're not getting any oh, therapy, the, they're the, just going to... Yeah, the infection. You know, you don't think that, hey, he's had a stroke. What's the infection about? But it yeah, the, happens. The, the, well, that was the whole thing, and they have uh, an infectious disease team, as they call themselves. And I was always asking them, "Where's your badges? What, don't you have like yeah. capes or coats or hats or something?" Yeah, you're in here, the infectious disease team, right. and they could not pin down exactly what the infection was. They knew it was coming from his brain, and there's all kinds of. I guess because the, they had a, he had a drain in mm -hmm. his head. Yeah, they had to drill right. a hole in his head twice. Right, uh, and to to just get rid of all the fluid and relieve the pressure on his brain, and somehow or other, you know, you're always gonna you're always at risk of getting an infection. So they he had an infection which ended up being a brain infection, and they just had to pin it down. As to exactly what they, there were always. But, but you see, you don't. You, what I'm saying is, you don't associate brain infection with stroke. You figure no. stroke does one thing, brain infection, question yeah. mark. You know, I mean, but but these are outgrowths of the of the stroke itself. One thing leads to another. It's like like dominoes yeah. falling. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And as one thing leads to another, and it, it took the longest time. because Oh, my sympathy in, goes with you, because every time you think you're just coming along, things are getting slightly better, boom, here comes the infection. 
Right, right. Yeah. There's always, it just seems like there's always something else. Yeah. And yeah. and at one point he was getting maybe four different kinds of antibiotics uh, being pumped into him all day, every day. He had a spinal tap. He had, the, they just. Did, he, he said to me that he was intubated. Uh, he was for maybe 24 hours. Oh, okay. All right. This was, um, he had been transferred to the acute rehab unit that I'm trying to get him back into now, which is another part of the story. Okay. And it, it, evidently the infection they thought had gone away didn't. So I went to visit him one day and he just wasn't there. He wasn't registering. He wasn't, he was kind of babbling incoherently. And I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I got the doctors to come in and say, look, you, you need to take him down and, and get you know a, a CT. You need a, another brain scan right now. Yeah. And they said, you know what? The infection's still there. <clears throat> so he had to leave that hospital in the <sighs> rehab unit <clears throat> and go back to the other hospital, back to ICU, and hence another six weeks of them trying to figure out what the heck the infection was, where it was, how to treat it and try to keep him alive at the same time. So that night when he was uh, before the transfer, they did intubate him so he wouldn't have to breathe on his own and, you know, the machine could do it okay. for him. Okay. And, and then that was a whole other thing because when you transfer a patient who's intubated, that, there's a whole bunch of equipment that has to go with him. Yeah. So you can't just have a regular ambulance. You need an ambulance that's going to have a doctor slash nurse who knows how to run everything sit in the back with you. And, and that was hey. another nightmare whatsoever because they could call for an ambulance, but you needed special ambulance. And that was another hour and a half. A little side trip here. Okay. How much do you think this has cost so far? Oh, um. 19 months, by the way, after a stroke. Okay. 19 months after a stroke. I can tell you. Uh, from getting all of the, uh, you, you know, you get notices from the insurance companies and everything and saying, this is what it costs, this is what you have to pay. And thank God that, uh, you know, we have supplemental insurance mm -hmm. because those six weeks in ICU alone were over $2 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's just insane. Just just crazy insane. So up to, and, 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 does Medicare pay for the the uh, nursing home that he's in, or no. don't they pay for a nursing home? No, he is in assisted living, which is kind of like a uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, it's not a home health thing. It's um, it's an assisted living facility where he yeah. is. Yeah. But it's it's not covered by you. You're you're on your own for rent. Whatever it costs, hmm. you're on your own. Oh boy. Well, you, so, you you have raised some money from from your GoFundMe, yes. which, by the way, if anybody wants to give, they can go to GoFundMe, put in Will Durst, and you'll get all the information there. It'll it'll come up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just did an update with all of this information just this past week. Yeah, but I mean, so. w w w and that's why I called you to do another one of these because there is an update. I mean, the things are are coming along very slowly. Uh, you know, <laughs> very slow, very slow. Certainly not as fast as you would like to see them go, and certainly not as fast. I mean, Will would like to be out of that bed right now and home and do. He always, every time I talk to him, he goes, "Well, I, I expect to be home by," and he has a, a date that he's figured out. You know, right? He's and, never and, made and any. We, yet. <laughs> yeah. Every time we come up with a date, it just seems like it gets pushed back further. Yeah, because, uh, you know, in, in a way, it was a, a blessing for him to have a stroke and then <coughs> having a pandemic mm -hmm. uh, simply because he wouldn't be working. You know, well, it's a good no time. I told him it's, it was a good time to have a stroke. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. I have allergies. I do, too. It's, it's horrible here. That's why I've been doing this with my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got the throat thing going on. Yeah, me too. Um. Yeah, so it's just it's been difficult. It's yeah. Been difficult. Well, I mean, what 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 I when when you mentioned what uh, first <coughs> first uh, first couple of weeks or couple of months after the stroke, uh, two million dollars, uh, you have raised on GoFundMe a really decent amount of about one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars 
Yeah, but hey, uh, put that against what it's costing to keep them in the medical facility. Now, uh, you know, does Medicare take care of that at all? No. Uh, no, I've been paying rent for his room for the past. Well, it's been over twelve months now because he's been there since March of twenty twenty. Hey, let me. Uh, so this, this you look at the, yeah. oh, Okay, now you look at the amount yeah. that we have raised on the GoFundMe. Yeah. And then you factor in that half of that money is gone already. Yeah. Because yeah. by paying rent in his room and his medical costs, because there's a copay for all the medications. Let me ask that. you this. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to ask you this depressing. I'm not trying to ask you this as a depressing question, but as a question of our whole medical system. Let's say you ran out of money. That 165000 is gone and your personal finances are gone. What happens to Will? Do they throw him out in the street? Uh, basically, probably. I mean, you can't, I, I, I'm not quite sure what sort of financial things that this place has, in, you know, if people can't pay because people are there and they're paying. Uh, if, if he's out, then I would have to bring him home and I would have to be with him 24 hours a day, 24-7, because we wouldn't be able to afford to have someone come in. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's in assisted living, because if he was home, the agencies and the people that you bring in would cost more than the rent where he is right now. And during the pandemic and everything, I, would you trust someone to come into the house? Isn't it just purely sad that in this nation, which is one of the richest nations in the world, that we don't take care of our people when they get sick? When you get sick like this, it shouldn't be a question of anything other than you getting better. You know, there should right. be no bills. I mean, I imagine a good, uh, you, uh, could you tell me what percentage of your life is taken with look, overseeing these bills and seeing what to pay and what not to pay and then calling the insurance companies and fighting with the insurance companies? That's at least 90%. Of your time? Of my time. I yeah. mean, all your free time, everything, 90% of that is spent 90%, negotiating. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, negotiating all of this stuff and trying to just figure it all out and, and how to pay everything. And there were, and like, like you, you know, we lost our supplemental health care with the, the SAG AFTRA yeah. at the beginning of the year. Right. And there was a big scramble to find another insurance company mm -hmm. to cover the supplemental. And, and how do you do that? It's like, well, seniors, you know, some people are like, well, you've got pre existing conditions. Well, he had a stroke. <laughs> you know, how, yeah. how are you supposed to and we're not cover and, somebody? And we're being thrown out of our other insurance. Yes. After he yeah. had the stroke. You know, right. it's not like they're going to say, well, as long as he's still getting working on it, we'll keep the insurance going, you know. No, they yeah. just threw everybody out. Yeah. I mean, I like to bring up the idea of Lloyd, uh, I forget what his name is, Norman Lloyd, who's the oldest actor in SAG. Uh, oh, he's, wow. I think, a hundred. Maybe he's going on a hundred and six years old. Wow. He doesn't have insurance anymore. Jeez. Because of the thing that After did with with uh, SAG After did with taking it out. And I when I looked and I've been a member of SAG or After or what then became SAG After since 1968. <whistles> you know, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of, uh, like, know, thanks and, for the and loyalty, I, guys. Yeah, you know. thank, thank you so much. I paid those dues every th six months, and I, you know, I, I stayed a member of the union even when I didn't need to because I wasn't working under union conditions. Right. Uh, but I stayed with it because I believed in the union. And right, then, and when, you turned uh, down work, too, uh, yeah, because I, it wasn't union work. Well, yeah, and um, um, you do that more with SAG than with AFTER, but... Uh, but the point it was that that, that uh, uh, all that loyalty in the end was never reciprocated. No, they don't care. Because I, care. when I suddenly got an insurance policy from them, an insurance supplemental insurance, it was wonderful. About two thousand dollars a year for Marjorie and I. Okay. And it had twenty five hundred dollars in dental, and it had to, you know, and I mean it had its drawbacks. It was a little more of a copay than you usually pay for stuff, but because now I have an insurance where I just don't pay anything. Uh, but I mean, 
it, it was it was wonderful. It was a godsend, and I never even uh, I never was able to get their insurance, their their SAG after insurance, because they never made enough under SAG after a. Okay. Right. Um, and so it was wonderful that all of a sudden I got this thing, and I said, "Well, am I eligible for this?" Oh, yes, you are, because you're a senior in the union. Congratulations! Thanks for being a part of the union all these years. And and I felt at least I got something for all those years of loyalty to the union. <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden they pull the rug out from all of us. It was something like 9,800 seniors or something were affected right. by this. Yeah, I, I thought it was it was closer to 10,000 people that you know. Oh, just, more, more like 12,000 members who right. were affected by this. Yeah. I mean, come on, what's a union for? This is what it's for. Not self-perpetuation, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but to supply medical help and retirement homes and all those things that unions should be doing for their members. Not saying, well, you know, we've just decided we can't afford the insurance anymore. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Well, whose nice, fault nice is that? You. Yeah, whose fault is that? It's not mine. I wasn't taking care of that fund. You were. Yeah. <laughs> so so in, in the case of Will... He's been affected by this as horribly as, as anybody else, you know. And on top of that, you do get that pre-existing condition deal when you suddenly lose one insurance and you want another insurance. Right, right. So how did you, you get around the pre-existing condition thing? Uh, it, it, well, you know, it was, he had a stroke, mm -hmm. so it's it, it not like he asked to be sick. You know, yeah, and, and, right. and there was that whole. Yeah, well, he woke up that morning saying, I, gee, I wish I could have a stroke today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I feel too well. I think <laughs> I need a stroke. But it just it took it took days and hours and hours. And of course, the pandemic. So nobody was working in an office. So you had to hope that someone was working from home. And I, I can't tell you how many I could hear the hold music in my sleep. Yeah, because sometimes you're you're on hold for hours. I finally got a real person. I said, you know, it was easier getting tickets for Hamilton than trying to get through yeah. to the insurance yeah. company. Yeah, yeah. And, and the people that you did get on the phone were working from home, and and the majority of them were very sweet and very nice, and they totally understood. And there was one woman that just spent at least an hour on the phone with me trying to talk me through the whole process and what I had to do. And she says, well, it says call that number, but don't call that number. You're not going to get anybody Call this number. Yeah. But it took me a month or so just to get a, get that woman on the other end of the phone. Wow. And, wow. And it sh she, that shouldn't uh, be. You know, I they, they had what I call the COVID excuse. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason we're so slow here is because of the COVID thing or working from home. Well, wait a minute. This is 2021. If we have the technology where I can Zoom you from the middle of Central Park, okay? Yeah. So uh, I, I, don't give me that, that you can't work from home. Obviously, all the things you need are right there on your computer at home. It's the same as if you were in the office, except now you're home. Don't yeah. use COVID as an excuse for inefficiency. Yes, it's 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 become a, a lazy excuse. For, and so for you become part of this whole thing, uh, you know, part of this whole mess. What what? So where where do we stand with Will? I mean, I, I sometimes I try I try to call him and he doesn't answer, and I you know it's hard to it's hard to get a hold of him. Uh, please let him know I'm trying. I will. <laughs> you know? I'm going to see him later today. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. say, for crying out loud, would yeah. you please text Alex? And I back? would like to do another little interview with him so people know he's, you know, his, his brain is yeah. still there. But yeah, and I'm, he would love to talk to you as as well. It, it, is he? It, does he still have good hope, or does or uh, is that is that flagging? How's his but spirits? By all in 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 intense and and. Uh, everything because i've been sitting through all of his uh therapy appointments he, both of his therapists were very encouraged because he is making progress but because of the insurance we had been cut down uh from physical therapy from two appointments a week mm. to one appointment a week and now we have nothing and you can't really do anything in one hour which is what is allotted for each session 
And <sighs> it, which brings us to, you know, the second part that I had alluded to before. At mm-hmm. this point, mm-hmm. I am trying to get him admitted into uh, this one hospital where he's going for his arm therapy. Yeah. They, they have an acute rehab right. unit where he was before the yeah. infection thing. Yeah. I'm trying to get him readmitted as a patient because they get three hours of therapy a day, that five would, days bingo, a week. Bingo. And that would be fabulous. But here's the thing. He's an outpatient. He's not in a hospital. He's mm. in an assisted living facility. And it is doubly hard to get somebody admitted into this unit from outside. Well, tell Will to have another stroke. <laughs> get him readmitted to hey, a hospital. Hey, I have a solution again. for everything. You know. Yes, but I, I called in a couple of favors, and I had people make some calls, and I actually heard back from the doctor yeah. who is in charge of the unit, and he remembers Will. Yeah. He's a fan of Will's. He said, I would love to have him back, and I would love to do the thing, but we have to do this dance again with Medicare, you know? Yep. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're, we're running short on time here, but I want you to sure. put in a good plug for the, for the GoFundMe. And folks... If you know, if you give them before, give again. I mean, this is not a cheap deal, and we want Will to get all the help he can possibly get. Okay, so they go to GoFundMe, and then you just type in Will Durst. You D-U-R-S-T. just type in Will Durst's name, and it'll come up. Yeah, and and you can see the uh, the latest, which is pretty much what I've talked about today. Yeah, because there's still so much work to be done. If he cannot get into this rehab unit. I will have to go and hunt for more outpatient therapy, and and it's it's a it's a deal. I've got to call yeah. Yellow Cab and set up a cab, a ramp taxi, because he's in a wheelchair, mm. and that's extra stress. And then you know I've got a paratransit card, so it doesn't cost us as much as a cab ride would, but it still costs money. Hmm. And just uh, trying, trying to get him well, home. Just trying bless to get him you, home. and tell him I'm trying to get a hold of him, and I'd love to talk to him again so that people can see him. And uh, everybody, please help them. It's you know we want this guy, work. we want this guy in, in good enough shape that he can either sit on a stage or stand on a stage, and do what he does. Not for, for a living, he really for a living it. and for his own spirits. You know? Yeah, he misses yeah. working. He misses being in front of people. There's so much going on, and he's actually gotten to the point where he's taking notes again in a notebook. Yeah, which is which is great progress. Yeah, and he's just given so much laughter and joy to people, and it's just very humbling yeah. and, and heartwarming to see people give back. Okay, and well, he appreciates the love. Stick around while uh, when we're when we're through here, so I can talk to you a little bit more personally. But I'm really glad we talked to you today. And oh so my Alex, yeah. thank you so much. And we love you and Will to death. Okay, <laughs> ladies love and you. gentlemen, Debbie Durst. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all righty. Excuse me. I got to do a few things here. I, got, I just spilled coffee. Mm, fuck me. Oh, well. Uh, and probably another uh, problem with another uh, thing here. Let me see here. Will I have a problem here? Okay, I hope we're okay. I hope we're all right. I hope we're not going to just get all wet. And <sighs> This is a mess. Okay, hold on a second, folks. Got to get some more tissue here. See, I mean, these things, I'm just getting clumsy around here. It's just getting terrible. Okay, all right, all right. And uh, I guess everything's okay. I would imagine it's all right. Let me see here. Is this a... Okay, all right, we're fine. All right, we're not getting... Uh, see, see, see? All over the place. Uh, but I'm getting it taken care of here. There we go. There we go. All right, are we okay? All right, we're all right? No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we got wetter and wetter. Oh, God, I hope we're not going to have a problem here. Uh, excuse me while I clean this up. Uh, this happens. Oh, boy. 
So anyway, I, I had a little uh, little spill here. Sli not a spill, really. It, it, I kind of like hit it, and the stuff fell out. And hopefully, the trouble is, if it happens to this, this is a, another keyboard, not the one I use for the show, main part of the show. But these have a tendency to really, if you get some liquid in them, they immediately go bad on you. There we go. We're, we're having a few problems here. Hold on a second. Let me just dry this out here. All right. Okay. We get all the liquid out of there. And hope that it uh, it works okay. All right. Hold on a moment. Uh, let me see here. Bum 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 bum. Do 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 do. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Do I have any uh, do I have any numbers here? Any problems? No. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Okay. There we go. All right, see this? It's a mess. Oh well, okay. Oh, there's hardly anybody waiting anyway. So, you know, we uh, we're not going to disappoint anybody by taking our time getting on here. Let me. Um, wow, gee, it is still it's still dripping out here. Got to get it so it doesn't uh, doesn't get wet. You know. And doesn't uh, seep in there and and uh, do a bunch of things. Okay, I think we're okay. I think we're fine. I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, all righty. Uh, well, well, let's just get some people here on the show. Uh, you know, that, that's what's frustrating me about me. I get I'm getting clumsy these days, and um, uh, it has something to do with the medicine, but. Anyway, I won't get into that. Let me uh, let me just bring some people on here and see if they are ready to go here. All right, okay, there we go. Uh, Ray Renati is trying to join us here. There you go, Ray. And uh, 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 yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Everybody's fine. Good. I'm sorry. I uh, had to. <laughs> I spilled the coffee. You know. I very. I'm very careful about not doing that too. So. When it happens, oh, here's some more wetness. I got to get take care of. All right. All righty. Got to get rid of the wetness. Here. Make sure that it's uh, all taken care of. Okay. Hello. How are we? Hello. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hello. I hope you didn't mind me taking that much time with uh, with uh, Debbie, but uh, no, not at all. You know, uh, no, I wanted people to hear what was what was going on. <clears throat> and I, you and I noticed today, I have a green outline on me, all of a sudden, which mm -hmm. I haven't had. But if I wear a uh, hold on a second, if I go get this, watch this. Well, if I go get uh, this and I put it on. Maybe it's just the red that's causing it. Uh, but if I do this, then I don't have the green screen. Then it's a nice clean cut. I, you know, ah. eh, it's one thing or it's another. Who cares anymore? Mm -hmm. uh, what What is that that we're looking at it uh, with Ray? That's Central Park. I'm riding my bike through Central Park. Are, oh, <laughs> are, are you really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? You inspired me the other day. So that, that I think you were like right near here, actually. That, that inspired you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, I'm happy to hear that. You know that we're uh, we're inspiring you to do something like that. Anyway, how are we all tonight? Mm. Yeah, nobody here tonight. What is this? A good night. Huh? It was a good day. Yeah, but I mean, nobody's here. Look, look at this. Why am I doing this? Nobody well, that matters. <laughs> why, why am I doing this anymore? Here comes Josh. That'll add mm -hmm. something. There we go. You know? There we uh, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people will start, I guess, start coming. I don't know. But, uh, no, I just, uh, it would just, you know, just before when I was just going, I was doing something, and my mm -hmm. hand hit my cup of coffee, which was filled a little too high, and then it spilled over onto the keyboard that I had here. 
Uh, and the last time that happened, I lost the keyboard. It just went. <laughs> but I think this is okay. I don't uh, think there's any problem here. So we're uh, we're uh, in fine fettle. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, I, I was good to hear from her about Will uh, because it's it's you know it, it it's a slow process you know, and I I mm -hmm. hope that he is going to be in. In enough good form that he'll be able to get back in the saddle again. But it's been 19 months, you know. And you know what it's like, uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 Jeff. You've been through it. I know. How long did your recovery take? Well, I would say a year. Yeah. To actually, to stop being gone to therapy every day. Really. Yeah. Where I actually walked out and went someplace. Yeah, well, he's not in that shape yet, and that's yeah. 19 months. And I wasn't driving or anything. No, uh, no. I mean, do, <clears throat> do you drive now? Yeah. Oh, you do drive? Yeah. Okay, yeah. But uh, my, my still big problem is I can't read very well. Yeah, and, and but didn't you, you also, you, you, you kind of got over it, you know, you, got, you, you came around. But you didn't have the. He, I don't think you had the same kind of problems that he had. I mean, his. his no, whole I don't right, have the major physical stuff that he. Had. Yeah, his yes. his right leg is gone. Yeah. And his right arm is, or his left leg is gone. The left arm is gone, yeah. and uh, they've got the arm working again, but the leg is still a problem. You know, and it just it just it, it, it but, but what she has to go through when she told me. I asked her how much of the of a day uh, of her day is taken up with dealing with the insurance company. She said ninety percent of her day. Oh, you know that shouldn't be. You get sick in this country, the, your government should say get well on us. Okay, we want go you. Go to Australia, huh? Go to, go to Australia. Australia. Go to Canada. Yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, are there any number of places we could go? I mean, come on, let Trucker Steve tell you about Canada. I mean, how much money do you pay every year in uh, health insurance, uh, Trucker Steve? Uh, going to the hospital? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. See, there it is, right there, Zilcho. <coughs> There's no copay? Oh, come on, it's got to be a copay. No, no copay. I see. Uh, so you mean to say that communist well, government of maybe yours? Maybe certain drugs you have to pay some some money, but as far as going to the hospital well, and well, the having surgery or fixing yeah. your broken arm or something, yeah, you don't pay for shit. Drugs can't be that. It, it, the drugs can't be that expensive. Really that bad. Yeah, the drugs can't be that expensive because that Americans go to Canada to go get their drugs. Get their drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's it's ridiculous. You know, it's just it's ridiculous Communism. that we have to worry here about how you pay for your your medical care, and mm -hmm. then you have a government that can't get it together to give it to us. I mean, what's with the, what's with the Republicans when it comes to this sort of thing? They don't want to do it. You know, uh, why? They're heartless bastards. Am I right? Uh, am I am I right, Josh? I would agree, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what is it with this country that we can't find our way to taking care of people's health? Well, we have, uh, I mean, I think I've said before many times that the two most important things, I guess, in my opinion, that people probably have in their life for their mm -hmm. livelihood and success is their health and an education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even talking higher education, but just an education. And those two things are like mega business in America. I mean, college education is mega business. I mean, lots of for-profit colleges. And all. I mean, even state, you know, Ohio State universities and, you know, Alabama and just regular colleges are expensive. And big, big well, I mean, Biden is talking about a, a, and, assuring that everybody can get at least a, um, um, a, two, year a two year degree. Yeah, right. And I'm it's going big business. I'm going, you should be able to get four years. You should be able to get as much as you need, you know, and, and used to be. Well, what we should do here is also what they do in England. Kids 
at a certain age decide which way they want to go. Do they want to go into a trade or do they want to go into something a little deeper than that? In which case, when they're in school, they start studying a vocation. And um, uh, I wish we'd do that here. I mean, we're not preparing kids for anything in high school. All we're doing is having them sit there and pass the time away. You know? So. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. In college. What, what were you going to say? Yeah. You, uh, when I was in college back in the 70s, the yeah. University of Illinois was $200 a year. <laughs> that was tuition. Yeah. $200 a year. What is it now? It's over twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, case made. Mm. Why are we getting oh, somebody's all, uh, Eve on his uh, house? I think he was on a pelotron. Yeah, he was uh, on the back porch or something. Yeah, Ray. <laughs> you know, it's not the kind of view we want. <laughs> You know. That beats the view in the Y that he used to be at. What? Remember when he used to be call in from the YMCA? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, got, uh, I got my second Pfizer shot today, and my yeah. back is killing me. Really? Really? Yeah. It's oh. like it's just all stiff. My whole I, body is just stiff. It, well, do you I, that my appointment. I got my appointment for May twenty fourth, and the second one September thirteenth. So they give you this first and se the dates for the first and the second at the same time. Yeah, mine, that's we got... Long, uh, from hmm? May till September? That's only supposed yeah, to be... Yeah, that seems... Weeks. Mine's only four weeks. Yeah. That's well, Canada. Yeah, it and it's Ontario. Why am I fucking moron? It was two weeks for Pfizer? No, it was three weeks for Pfizer. Yeah, yeah. three weeks. Three hmm. weeks for Pfizer. Okay. Yeah. And it's yeah, two weeks for Pfizer. Well, it was five weeks for me. It was five and a half weeks for yeah. me, if you may remember. Yeah. yeah. Because they <clears throat> they didn't sign me up right or something. I don't know. What I love now is that I before I had to you know we had to wait online to go to and get the date da, 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 and then go there and then get another date blah 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 blah. Now all you have to do, okay, is go down to your local uh, pharmacy and go get the damn shot. Don't even make an appointment. You know. Yeah, you can walk in anywhere in San Francisco yeah. now. Yeah. There's, you can go anywhere you want. Just walk in. They'll give you the shot. Yeah. Here's one of the people that uh, we see a lot on the in the group uh, chat, but it's John Redshaw. Hello, John. Hi. How hey, you doing? I've got good news to report, too. What's I got the... my first shot. Yeah. And next week I'm going to get my second shot, Pfizer. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. oh you got your first shot a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. 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 And then you're going to get your second shot. Yep. Yeah, and uh, then there's supposed to be maybe a third shot coming. Oh, you know, maybe like maybe. six months later or something. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll take it if I need it. Yeah. No, you're you know good for, good for everybody. How many people here have had at least one shot? Would you raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just about everybody. Well, Josh hasn't yet, right, Josh? No, I haven't. Why? I don't care, I guess. <laughs> he didn't want to wait in line an hour and a half like we had to. Well, yeah, but now you can go to a, you can go to a pharmacy, and I I went by uh, CVS yesterday the other day just because I was getting some stuff, and I went to look at what kind of line they had there, and uh, lo and behold, there were like three people waiting, mm. you know, so it, it's it's getting pretty fast to get one now, you know. Uh, which is pretty damn good. But. Yeah, they, they they had a sign at the place where I got mine. Over it was uh, the college USF, and the sign said, "Walk in, welcome. Anybody needs one, you know, you can walk right up and do it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, it's gotten that way now that in some states, in fact, they're they're begging people to get shots. Yeah. Yeah, Texas. Yeah, um, you know what I. I don't understand what the reluctance is. Tell me, please, give me some kind of indication here, uh, Charlie. Why blacks are so reluctant to get the shot? I mean, my feeling is if black lives matter, then you know, wear a mask and get the shot, right? 
because you don't want to infect other black people if you're black, right? Yeah, yeah but I think uh, I think that's blown out of proportion. All the blacks yeah, I, I know are, yeah. have gotten their shots. Yeah. Well, I think that's largely a myth. Well, I don't know if it's a myth uh, because they say here in New York they the the statistics are something like you know. 60% of the white population has gotten their first shot, where the black population, it's only like 9%. Really? So, yes, yeah, a very small amount. And I, I don't understand it. I mean, hey, Tuskegee happened, what, 60 years ago? You know, I mean... Most it, people don't even know what And is. most people don't even know what it is. They, they just say Tuskegee yeah. now because, you know... Yes, but Ray? I think black people know. I was just going to say that... I could understand the reluctance if it was just the United States, but it's the whole world. So yeah. it would have to be a worldwide conspiracy, and that's unplausible to me. Right? Well, if it's a conspiracy, I guess there are two, 300 million of us in America who are going to be very ill sometime soon. You know. Uh, yes, Alan? So I, on the black thing issue, I, I think there's several things going on. All my black friends are getting it or have got it, too. Mm-hmm. But, but a lot of blacks and Latinos that they claim are not getting it live in inner city areas, mm -hmm. don't see doctors, are yeah. getting misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are very poor people mm -hmm. and don't have computers early on to get the an appointment for a yeah. vaccine. Yeah. And so I think maybe now yeah. there's not much of an excuse and I think a lot more minorities are getting it. LA County had some of the highest numbers in January in the country and the numbers are way, way down. And a friend of mine that's an ER doc down there says Latinos are lining up by the grove down there to get shots. And and, and black people too. What movies. is what is by the by the droves, you mean? Yes. Oh, I thought you said grove. <laughs> and they said nine per nine percent more Republicans are getting them too. Oh really? That's yeah, the Republicans be false are news. increasing. The Republicans are increasing now too. I'm getting the shot. Good. False yeah. news. Maybe well, because it, Trump said something. Right. <laughs> yeah, Josh. I found out Trump had it the day be, the day after the right. shot came out. Josh, is, is why are the reluctance to get a shot? You just haven't gotten around to it, or? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I I don't even know how you schedule it or anything. I, do you have to go on the internet, create a fucking username? And no, 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 no. I gotta no. drive somewhere and I gotta no. talk to no, someone. No, you don't. No, you don't, Josh. No, you gotta see. Well, wait a minute. You, you have a CVS pharmacy near you? Yeah. Uh, do, do you have a Walgreens? Yeah, sort of, I guess. Walmart is doing it. Walmart, Walmart. Yeah, you go to Walmart. Yeah, you just walk right yeah. in now. Safeway. Yeah. I saw a lady in front of me get one. I still got to I still got to talk to someone. Well, no, you don't have to talk to anybody. Just get in your car, go down to CVS, say where are you giving the the shots. Go to the back of the the uh, the CVS and let them stab you. You know. Hey, if you never come out of your house, you don't need a shot anyway. So what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Unless somebody comes over with it, just ask Tony. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it's pretty easy now. You know, that, that's the thing. When I first did it, if you wanted to use that excuse when I was trying to get it in the beginning, oh, yeah. I'd go along. Oh, would, uh, you, didn't you have a real problem, uh, John, getting a date and stuff? Yes, on the mass vac vaccination sites for, yeah. the, uh, for New York State. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. On, and they kept saying, no appointment, no appointment. One Sunday afternoon, I popped in, and they had an appointment for the following Wednesday. <laughs> so it was it was amazing, and I went there, and it was so well organized, so so easy to get in and out. It wasn't like I was waiting online for anything at any time. Yeah, I mean the organization has been here at least here in New York has been pretty damn good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the first one I had to wait two hours to get my shot. We had to wait in line that long. The second time, they said, oh, you're an old fart, you and your wife. They're, you're both old farts. Here, come, let's take you to the front of the line. And I was in and out of there in like 10 minutes, you know. Well, more than that, because I had to wait 15 to cool down before they let me go, you know. It was a big operation out there on Long Island. Uh, oh. And it was, it was surprising how I went from one room to another, and everything seemed to be 
you know, it was like designed so you didn't have to wait online or anything. Well, I love Kevin because Kevin got his mother her shot, and they they but she did it in the car. Yeah, yeah. Just they drive drove. But now, up. now you don't even. I'm going to take my daughter to get her second one, and uh, they tell you your day, and they tell you a time, but she says. You don't have to come at that time. Just come on that day. Don't even worry about the time. Well, can't you just go into a pharmacy right now and go get it? Rather well, than even not, have... Yeah, you can. But uh, Like, I was at CVS just the other night, and mm -hmm. they had two or three extra shots, and they said, anybody want a shot? We got two extras right now. See? And I said, well, why don't you go on Facebook? You'll have about 80 people here right now. Yeah, well, I, I you know, I don't think it's not that difficult. Said, no, no, no. You know, Don't do that. It's not that difficult any longer. And uh, I just think that the faster we can get everybody vaccinated, the better, the faster we're going to get back to somewhat uh, normalcy in our lives. Have you, you, you had your shot, right, Ray? You had your shot? I've had both, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I've got a guy in my street doing it out of his garage. It's crazy. Doing it out of his garage? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Are they real? Okay. Whatever. No, you do not. I, yeah, I'm just bullshit. Whatever happened? Both my... Whatever happened to lawn sales? You know. <laughs> Ray, maybe he had an extra bottle of Clorox. Yeah, yeah maybe. He's it works pretty well. I heard. He's yeah. a Republican. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, it's um, we're. Uh, so, I, I was what? reading in, in San Francisco last year that we've had about. 250 COVID deaths, mm -hmm. but about 800 fentanyl overdoses. <laughs> yeah. it's oh, really? Yeah, fentanyl is really bad right now. It's a disaster here. The fentanyl and the oh, heroin. Man, so bad. You know, something, I may be wrong because I may be just mm -hmm. distant from it, but we don't hear that much about drug problems in New York City. And you we would hear admit, about it. Huh? We hear about it. What, in New York City? Yeah. It's a nationwide I thing. Uh, but I haven't heard that. They, you know, you usually hear them. <laughs> you see a, a, a uptick in anti-drug ads on television, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have any drug ads on television. The only ads we have are go out and get your shot. Well, yeah. Hey, yeah. Alex. Yeah. Last time I was in New York City, there was a kid passed out on the sidewalk, and, uh, and they sent ambulance, fire... Fire trucks in San Francisco. You just walk by them. I mean, you walk by any block, you see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, San Francisco used to be really low in um, uh, the you know drug overdoses. Mm -hmm. We had it really, you know, one of the lowest in the country. Yeah. But the last three four years, there's been this horrible epidemic of fentanyl, and it's gone crazy. I don't know what it is. It's horrible. Well, with with heroin. You could start using the heroin today. Anybody here could, and not have too much of a problem. Forget about the AIDS or the. Actually, of all those drugs you're talking about, heroin is probably the least dangerous. Yeah. Right. And yes. so when people people get used to heroin, and they want to move up to something stronger, and they try fentanyl, and yeah, it, it doesn't it, take much to overdose. Just no. You know, uh, no, what's happening? What's happening is they're cutting the heroin with fentanyl, yeah. and they're putting fentanyl into things well, like Percocet and, and everything else. They're they're putting fentanyl on that to increase the strength of it, and sure. that's what's fucking them up. The people are also taking fentanyl on purpose. Yeah, they, and they yeah. don't know how to dose it. That's right. yeah. If they can't get the heroin, they're going to take that's, the. That's what I'm saying. Available. Well, you know, I I for years been no. I have for years been for making all drugs legal. Don't yeah. make them illegal. Yeah, because, don't do fentanyl. Well, because what you do is you get things like fentanyl, and where maybe if you at least had a legal fentanyl, you'd know what the dose is. You do have. You know. Yeah, but you look at the shit and you you can get high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Stuff's strong, man. It, it, you can, if you touch it, it can go right through your skin. Really? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it it's, don't yeah. and die within minutes. Yeah. Just by touching fentanyl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah they they say that the cops won't touch it. That's well, right. Well, I mean, what what good is this drug then? Why is it even in the? Why is it even available? A uh, hundred times more powerful than morphine. And if you've had a colonoscopy in the past. 
15 or 20 years, uh, well, fentanyl was probably used. No, for what? Uh, yeah. 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 So the scope, when it bounces around inside your colon, hits other organs and it stops the pain. I no, know. I look. I I've had. Uh, That's propofol. Propofol. You're talking about propofol. They, 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 propofol there's no you. There is no use of fentanyl. Propofol is not is not a pain reliever. It, no, it puts you out. It puts you yeah, out. That's what they used on my colonoscopy. That's what they what? used on mine. Propofol? Yes, that's a, that, that's a, that's a, that's. A You're wrong. Problem. Fentanyl is not used in in. Uh, yeah, in, fentanyl is not is is made in China. It's not used in any kind of medical. You know, really, it's just synthetic heroin. Is what I, it is. I'm glad you understand that, John. You have no clue. You have no <laughs> clue. Well, maybe you have no clue. Uh, come on, fentanyl is a is a legal fentanyl drug. is not used for colonoscopies, and I'm I'm saying that now, because especially for people watching, I don't want them to think that if they go and get a colonoscopy, which is a life saving procedure, by the yeah. way, that they're going to be fed fentanyl. Why? They're, because well, no, you, you get you actually get low doses of that. In the hospital for a lot of different shit. Absolutely. Yeah, but not and for a col colonoscopy. not for a colonoscopy. So the way they sedate you in a colonoscopy depends how invasive it was. Is they use propofol? Yeah, or or Versed. Do you know what? Does anybody know what Versed is here? No. It's 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 le a lot less dangerous than propofol. Propofol is like what Michael Jackson died on. Yeah. It's a lot less. It's in the Valium family. It's quick acting. Well, the only the only it's reason the, wait a minute, the only reason no yeah. the only there it reason is right here. why there it is. what it's a it's a powerful synthetic opioid analge analgesic that is similar to morphine but fifty to hundred times more potent a Schedule II prescription drug and is typically used to treat patients with severe pain to manage pain after but surgery. What are you talking? So it is about? What, what, are you, what what are you talking about? No. Uh, uh, Fentanyl. 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 Yeah. So it's a it's a medical drug. I mean, they use Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why John was so off. But you don't they, you don't need it for yeah. a, you don't need it for a colonoscopy. There's no. How do you know? Are because you, I you... I know they put you out and then then you don't feel anything. Now, why do they have? Just real quick here, Ray. Sorry. Oh boy, is there anybody out there listening to us who's a doctor who can call up and inform this guy what? that colonoscopies don't include ask, propofol? Ask I mean, uh, don't Mary include. Knows everything. I just asked what what it's used for medically, and that's what it gave me. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but it didn't give you. It, it, it didn't say colonoscopies. Yes. Okay. I'll, ask, I'll ask. I'll ask. that for? Uh, was yeah, fentanyl used colonoscopy. for colonoscopy? Yeah. Right. Can right. I just interject for a second? The fentanyl that's on the street is not medical use, you know, fentanyl. It's you know, not it's pharmaceutical just, grade. That's correct. Right. Yeah, it's it's just it's manufactured in China you know, on the black market. So it's you know you don't know what you're getting is what I'm trying to say. Manufactured drug labs in this country too, John. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate. Probably, yeah, you're, it's you're, unfortunate. Yeah, you're true. That's probably true. Uh, I just want to tell everyone, yesterday I met with my doctor, and I just signed up for a non-drug colonoscopy. No drugs. The little really? camera? Okay. They're going to do so, the whole thing without anything. Okay. Wow. your answer. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Kevin's got the answer. I had to tell you that. Courageous. Sedative agents uh -huh. that are currently available for colonoscopy in include midazolam, propofol, mm. diazepam, yeah. diazahanadramaline, Ramalamadingo. Metadrebaline and fentanyl. And, fent and, and fentanyl? Okay. And fentanyl. So Most maybe of those other ones are benzodiazepines. I continue. Sorry. Among these, midazolam and propofol are the most commonly used sedatives. Yeah, that's what they used on Whereas fentanyl is the most frequently administered analgesic. There you go. Just most frequently um, oh, analgesic, but that's post-colonoscopy. Post that's What's for putting somebody under. Put some, putting somebody under is fentanyl? That's what it says. Yep. Really? yep. I was never given fentanyl. Never. Yeah, well, well you like know, that's you. just... They probably that do it choice. differently everywhere. Yeah. Some places use morphine. Some places use but does fentanyl. But does, does it... Wait, hold on a second. Does it seem we'll like... Nothing. The, that's from uh, U.S. National Laboratory of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. Yeah, but why, why did they list fentanyl last? Is that because it's the least used? 
No. I guess. Yeah. We can sit here and, you know, do that. What's the difference between conscious and deep sedata- sed- sedation? Right. That That's why they would use fentanyl. Yeah. It's it's a matter of whether you're going you deep. It a conscious sedation. So Correct. It, it can make you so fucking high. That you have an inability in a way. But it, but to but, but for a colonoscopy, in most the cases, they just put you out, and that's propofol. They may choose to do that, right? Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, so if they're not going to put you well, out, who died and made you a doctor, right. Alan? As with conscious sedation, <laughs> patients <laughs> typically remain arousable at all times. The, Deep the sedation with propofol allows I'll, most patients to sleep through the procedure yes, and right. is administered by an anesthesiologist right. or nurse anesthetist. Right. However, above de- the demarcation between the conscious and deep sedation may not hold true for all patients. Some may sleep through the procedure with conscious sedation or remain arousable with deep sedation. Right. Well, I, for instance, purpose. when I got... What, what were you going to say, Josh? That would be the purpose of the fentanyl. I mean, they're not making you high. Because they're mixing it with another drug that gives you the yes, that's you know, the other effect. That's what I said. Because I mean, it, uh, it, Alex, what, keeps but it will numb pain and and it, yeah, it's, it's probably well, when I had my seeds inserted in my prostate. Okay, they couldn't put me out because they said they felt I was too old to be put out and they didn't want to okay. take the risk. Okay. Well, there was so, a reason. Oh, okay, so I mean, let me finish. So what they did to me is they gave me a spinal and numb me from the waist down uh and uh the the then what they gave me to make me feel good was they gave me intravenous valium and it was the same as almost being put out you're just in la la land but there was no fentanyl involved well, see, when they gave me when they put in my my spinal cord stimulator yeah they gave me both fentanyl and propofol and they could tell me, they were talking to me, and they would say, how you feeling? And they'd go, how you doing? And I'd go, ah, I'm just feeling great, you know? And then there was times when they would just, they'd take me away. Yeah. And then they'd pull me back out, and they'd take me away when they were doing something. We're going to put you out for a minute. And they'd do something, and then I'd come back out. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. What's for lunch? You know, and then they'd, we're going to put you out for a minute again, you know, when they were doing something. So I was in and out. Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think that was a combination of both. Well, I think they, they wanted you. Back, they, they, and they were cutting they, me open in my back, yeah, and putting but, shit in there, and yeah. putting probes up my spine. So, but I think mm-hmm. they wanted you somewhat lucid in a way so that you could tell them when things were going right. Correct. Wrong, right. That's what they yeah. Were doing. Yeah. In my case, they just wanted me out, and in the case of the uh, prostate seeds, they just wanted me not to feel the operation happening. You know, uh, but they didn't use probe. Uh, they didn't use a. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Propofol is a, is an anesthetic yeah. drug. It doesn't stop pain. Look it up. It's Can not I, supposed to stop pain. It is supposed to put you out so you don't. You are not that, aware absolutely. of the pain. Can I but say you know what they, If they use oh, I, just sedation, hey, look. Just like uh, when you get when you get your medical degree, come back and give us all this information, okay? Uh, because that's I why you got the epidural. Stop yeah, so, the pain. So, yeah, so Kevin just told you what I said. Looking it up. No, he did, you said you said they give you what they give you is they give you fentanyl. You know, and, and, and you and acted like that was up. the main thing they give you. And the thing is, I know oh, from every could, every one that I've ever had that I always had propofol. I in fact they okay. list what they gave you, and I've uh, I've seen what they give me. And so let me yeah. let me ask something. Oh, can I say How that? many people? have ever wondered why they have all the heart restarting equipment like a little emergency room when they give you when they give you a colonoscopy well can i say one thing big huh yeah okay so here i funny you said that alex when i went for my colonoscopy mm-hmm. months ago yeah i was nervous because they knew i was nervous because i was never faked or was i ever put under i says no i was never put under so i was nervous about that. you've been put down but you've not <laughs> oh, but you know what I remember? Yeah. They first when they get you in the room when my brother dropped me off, I went in, they put you in the room and then they IV'd me, right? So I told the lady, is this I thought they were drugging me up already. She's she's not yet. And then then the anesthesiologist came over and I'll never forget what he said. He goes, I was nervous. So the guy he was an older guy, he says, 
You never were put under the nurse. Toby says, no, he says, don't worry about it. He says, you'll have a good ride. He says, you won't remember anything. You got nothing to worry about. So I'm going to have a good ride. What is he talking about? And then they wheel you into the room, right? That's the and good ride. The only thing I remember is, this is what I was going to ask you, because maybe you guys would know this. I remember laying over, you had the light, and they says, are you out yet? And they laid back. I says, no, I still, I'm, I'm still awake. He says, count down from 10. And I went, 10, and boom. I just went. Now, did they intervene to me? I was wondering, did they give me no, a needle? The, did what they did, the what they did is they put a needle in your arm. Okay. Yeah. Then they because probably were, they they were probably down. feeding saline into it. And then when they find, want to put you out, they then put the, the juice in there to put you out. They did say roll on your side. And then I said, oh, geez, when am I going to get the needle? I think they said, and next thing I know, boom, I just I just went black. Well, and it isn't a matter that you know that you went black. What usually happens with me is uh, I uh, they, they start it, and uh, then they say to me, it's over. You know, yeah, it's like somebody, it it's, like somebody it. it's like somebody edited 25 minutes out of my life. Yeah. My brother was waiting in the waiting room. He says, how'd it go? He says, I don't remember anything. He says, I told you not to remember nothing. Yeah, no. And what, what Marjorie loves is just with propofol, there's a little, like, one or two second rush you get before you go really? under. And she lives for that, you know. Because it's like a, yeah, it's like a, and the you next ever thing. Had, you ever uh, had a bad experience on it? I did. Really? What happened? My On my, uh, uh, they used to use a, a med called, and it started with a B, and I can't remember what it was, back in uh, 85 when I had my surgery on my leg, I came out of the surgery and I had a, what, you know, the old out of body experience. Mm -hmm. Really? I, uh, they said that I came out of the, I came out of the, the, I had a bad reaction to the anesthesia. Oh. And I remember coming out and like, sounds weird. But I came above the room. Mm -hmm. They say that. And I remember looking down onto oh, the oh, really? onto the room and you were watching seeing the doctors going, Oh shit, this isn't supposed to be happening. What the fuck is going on? I heard the doctor <laughs> saying that. <laughs> and really I remember funny, all this commotion. And this was just taking, you know, putting screws in my legs. And then they were shuffling around and god damn it, go over there, get this, get that, get this, get that. And then I blacked out again. And when I woke up I felt like I'd gone 10 rounds with Muhammad Ali. Oh every gosh. fucking muscle and every bo bone in my body hurt the next day. Wow. Every single one of them. That's and a I come went to into Jesus. the doctor for my post-op. Big Jesus. And he's, he's, I said, you know, what's this? What? Why am I? Why do I feel like that? And I was just getting a couple of screws put in my leg. And he goes, yeah, well, we had a little bit of a issue with the anesthesia. You reacted yeah. to it. And I go, well... I remember he goes, yeah, you, you had something going on in your head because you were talking to us and we were scuffling around looking for shit. And you know, I go, I, I, something was going on. And he said, yeah. And he said, the muscles, your muscles, every muscles in your, in your body contracted and recontracted and, and did this whole muscle thing. Well, you kind of exercised it actually in a strange way. Yeah, and yeah. I mean my yeah. muscles in my gut, my arms, my legs, every muscle in my body hurt for two days. Wow. Here, like, here, so you, you had know, a good I, workout. Then. I'll tell you one thing yeah, is basically. Uh, uh, what happened when they did the when they did the spinal on me and then they gave me the juice, you know, they gave me the intravenous Valium and I'm in La La Land, but they don't I'm not out. And yeah. and you, you really don't want to hear what goes on. What happened? In the operating room. Well, oh, yeah, my heart rate went to zero almost. Wow. Oh, well, in it my case, in he my said, case, you know, I was hearing what they were talking about. And I'm figuring, you know, they're going to talk about, well, uh, here, give me another thing there. So I put another seed in here and let me do this and let me do that. No, it's you so what are, you, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I don't know. I'm going to hit it. La, 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 la. You know, I mean, and you listen to this these conversations going on in the room and you're losing you. all faith in medicine, you know, because oh, it's I not. Think you think it's a lot. It's nobody, like not. Nobody's talking about medicine, you know, so it's. Well, oh, yeah. What happened doing, with me, my first one? What did you talking say? Talking about tools. Oh, you got to torque it to this much, you know, 13 yeah, centimeters. Right. It's exactly. the other tool and torque it to 13 centimeters. Exactly. Three turns to the right. You you know, I, I, what the fuck are you I, doing back there with the Dremel tool? I just want the steak. I don't want to know how the cow is killed, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it, yes, yes, Alan. So when, when they gave you, you said Valium. When they gave you Valium, mm -hmm. 
Um, how long did it take you to feel normal after the procedure? Uh, it took me about three hours, and the reason I'm saying that is not for the reason you think, but when they give you a spinal, they have to wait for it to wear off. And you can't walk out, well, you can't walk until that spinal wears off. I mean, I became instant Patrick, you know? I mean, I knew what it was like to be it. Patrick and to have nothing working below your your midsection. Well, and, and What the, about from the volume? What effects, how long did the volume uh, last? No, no problem. Out. That No problem. Yeah. That was fine. That was fine. So it lasted three hours, the volume? The, the, no, 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 no. The, the spinal, once they stopped the spinal, it took three hours before I could I get up and that. walk out of the hospital. I understand that. Yeah. You know, uh, hey, I can tell you about Valium. I know a lot about Benzos. The half-life is two weeks. So if they gave you a low dose, it stays in your body for two weeks. But they give you a different Benzo during the operation, which only lasts for like three hours. It's the one that begins with the M. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the unfortunately, I was addicted to those drugs for 18 years, so I know all about them. Yeah, the name brand is Versed, yeah. like I said earlier, like Kevin said, and it, Versed is, just like you, Ray said, so Ver, what Versed is, is it's in the Valium family, but Valium lasts Isn't Versed long. a little town near Modesto? Yeah, <laughs> sort of. So, so, so Versed is in the Valium family. I know a lot about pharmacology, but in any case, the Versed is in the, in the Valium pharmacy, uh, Family, not pharmacy. The benzodiazepine. That, that's, that's right. Benzo, so yeah. Well, this Valium, is Valium. If you took Valium for anxiety, for instance, or something like that, you took a pill. Yeah, I know, Alex. You don't want to hear it. It's okay. Well, it is getting boring. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So okay. it, is, it is. Excuse me. It's getting boring. You know. I mean, there's only so much we can hear about these various medicines. When okay. most of the people listening to this probably never tried any of them. John, have you tried any of these? Uh, no. Recreationally. No, no I'm, yeah. talking, I'm, uh -huh. I'm talking about John Redshaw here. Oh. John? No, I, I haven't done anything further than, uh, than marijuana. But <laughs> I passed that when I did that, so I didn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah okay. Yes, uh, Brian Neary. And then uh, when, I, when, I was younger, when I was younger, we used to dry out ketamine, chop it up, and snort it. Oh, you know what I used to do? Uh, special special K, that was fun stuff. Yeah, and, and John, you had something you wanted to say, Larkin? Yeah, I, I used to do uh, Quaaludes a couple of times when I was back in the 70s. Remember Quaaludes? Well, ketamine, yeah. ketamine is horse tranquilizer, Brian. It's brain. They do it for humans, too. The human yeah. one is the smoothest one. But really? they do it for animals, all animals, when they numb the brain. What do, what do I need doctors for? I got you guys. You all know <laughs> you more about these drugs. Than, yeah. You know. Uh, right. You got us. Yeah, right. You know. They're starting to use ecstasy for uh, psychiatric people. Well, ecstasy, there's nothing wrong with ecstasy. Nothing also, wrong they're with using ecstasy. ketamine for psychiatric yeah. low dose ketamine. No, there was nothing wrong with there was nothing wrong with ecstasy. Uh, and I asked a doctor once about it. I said, you know, because I had a girlfriend who was having me take ecstasy every now and then because she, she liked what it did for me, and uh, um, uh, I asked him about it, and he said, nah. He said that's the one drug that's no problem. He said there's no there are no problems associated with it. Uh, it, it's no they just, on it. Huh? The I, FDA can't go deed on it. No, yeah, they, the people, FDA. No, the this, FDA just finished first stage approval of MDMA this week. Yeah, yeah. Ecstasy for uh, psychiatric disorders right. like depression. Yeah. yeah. Dear MDMA, the problem is yep. people cut that up with stuff with caffeine in it to keep them up and then have that. When you talk, John Larkin, about overdosing, a lot of times the reason people overdose is not the drug itself, but what people add to it before they sell it to you. Yeah, that's true. That's and, true. and that's the, but I was told by a doctor that ecstasy was not a problem. That basically was a pretty benign drug, and it just got you high, you know, got, got you. Unless uh, you overdosed. Unless, unless somebody put something in it that made you yeah. overdose. And, and, and the other problem with MDMA is when you're at a club and you're not with your friends, and your friends aren't taking care of you and giving you water, you start dehydrating. Oh yes, that's, that's yeah. Well, so people, so kids would be in their car because they would leave their friends. 
and their friends don't take care of them, and they die in their car because they're not drinking any water. That's why you have to have good friends when you're on drugs. No, wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask, I want to ask Tony, I want to ask Tony something because uh, Tony, uh, this is a big question. I've never asked you this. To be honest, I will. I'm not gonna lie. What's the worst drug you've ever taken? You know, that's gonna. Be <laughs> Probably the only one is when I was on amoxicillin for my cold. I never see, take now, that's not what I'm mentioning. I'm talking about recreational drugs. I never did anything. See, that's what I figured. And I'm not lying about it. No, I, I, I know you're not lying, lying about it. You don't get out much. No, actually, no, <laughs> no. I, you're right. I'm very nerdy. I'm definitely always into my things. Yeah. Because you know, I, I would say to everybody here, how many people here have at one time or another taken a recreational drug? Would you raise your hands? And I can't even count, Alex, when I went to see some bands play that I can actually inhale, like you can smell that. It smelled like incense. I hate it. Like when I went to see... like Marijuana smells I like... Had, I didn't like, like it. I, like, eat, I had to eat afterwards. Like with marijuana the smells like a pleasant skunk. I, I, after we got out of like the small shot, you said, go to Burger King. I got to get... I couldn't stand the smell of smoke. Really? So, so yeah, Alex, I like yes. Yeah, I hate skunk. Oh man, I, 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 think, I think you ought to answer the question. Well, give me a why, why did Tony feel sick from amoxicillin? What is amoxicillin? No, no, I had a cold, so my doctor gave me the amoxicillin. I, I know what it is. I want to, Alex seems to be the expert. He actually made no, me I'm sleep. I'm not an expert. You know. I what know what, I know what amoxicillin is. is it? It's one of it's one of the cillins, one of the penicillin type drugs, one of the antibiotics. Yeah, I, I, I actually had a bad cold for a while, and I, I kept putting off going to the doctor. See, so I, I, I don't know why doctors give you one or the other. You know, there are a lot he of told me to finish the thing, and he says, good thing I went, because it could have turned into, like, pneumonia. He says, my, my lungs were fine, he says, but this was a long time ago. He says, Tate, you don't want to play around with a cold, he said. Well, you know, God bless all those uh, all those antibiotics that came along. I mean, yeah, people were dying. We'd be dead long ago. People were dying of simple st stuff years ago. You know, and we saved a lot. And my of doctor, lives. Alex, the family doctor that that we used, he he's against really using any. Only he really doesn't want you to use drugs at all. I mean, only if you have to. Like you know, he'll give some. Well, I mean, if you've got an infection, and the only way yeah. to get rid of it is an antibiotic, he's going to give you an antibiotic. But he's not going to give you an antibiotic. Just because he thinks, well, this might exactly. solve the problem. Yeah, he he's that. Yeah, he will never do that. Yep. Doctors hate promiscuously giving, you know, antibiotics. Well, that's why we have a big antibiotic resistance right now to a lot of things, and a lot of the antibiotics that worked ten years ago don't work. Listen, either. part of the problem is that you, 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 you drink you drink tap water, and it probably has some antibiotics in it. Just because they get into the they get into the uh, uh, into the uh, water system. I flush the mobile medicine down the thing. What did they say at one point that if you took any uh, twenty dollar bill and scraped it, you would find cocaine on it? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That that uh, there was so much cocaine being used in this country at one point, and the twenty dollar bills to snort them with, that almost oh. every twenty dollar bill had a trace of cocaine on it. But they said hundred. I remember them saying hundred dollar bills because oh, right. it's such a such a yeah. I was the, the, with my the, people, friend. the people that couldn't afford real cocaine used twenty dollar bills. Uh, well, that's what I'm. I'm just, I was. I was just cheap, and I used a twenty dollar oh, okay, bill instead of a hundred dollar bill. I'm not trying to impress my friends. I don't give a shit. Somebody might steal the hundred dollar bill. I've never done cocaine. Charlie, you don't look like much of a guy who used drugs much, or am I wrong? I marijuana is the only thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to like mushrooms. Mushrooms were fun. What have you done? Yeah, but that can get you that can get you nauseous, though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, you look like a party type guy, John. What haven't you done? <laughs> heroin. I never did heroin. Never did heroin either. Good. Yeah. I hear it's terrific. I hear it's wonderful, but you don't. Want, you just don't want to get hooked on it. It's, you never did any kind of drug where you had to put a needle in your arm. No way. Yeah. Well, you don't yeah. have to put a needle in your arm for heroin. You can snort it. You yeah, know. that's smoke okay. it. But I've never tried it. I've I, I've been offered it, never tried it. It's something that I completely avoided. In fact, I don't do any drugs now to speak of, except my, you know, my pregabalin that I take for neuropathy, which is a great little drug if you want to get high. You talk about that all the time. Oh, it's great. I try, but I only do it about every other night because I don't want to get, you know, hooked on it and stuff like that. Right. 
right. But tonight's per gabbling night. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> How do we get into all of this? God. Not really. It was the drug night. It, this is, yeah, yeah. Thank you for looking that up, Kevin. Everybody Let's talk about Caitlyn Jenner. Well, what about her? She's a master. I, I don't know. Did you see the interview she did yesterday? Yeah, she's, yeah. she's really stupid, isn't she? Yeah, extremely yeah. stupid. Oh, man. Who, who I, in, I used to idolize Caitlyn Jenner. Train. Train. Who, who did I say? California's it's in deep shit. Of all what did what, what, you say, uh, Kevin? I said California's in deep shit with all these morons going to run for governor here. Again. Again. Well, she looked like an idiot. I mean, she was being asked questions by Sean Hannity, I think, was interviewing her. Yeah, she's turning into a Trump It'd be a circus. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I see no reason for Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, we say to Caitlyn Jenner, you want to be governor? Okay, what you, what's your qualifications? Right? Uh, what's your qualifications? You were, you, you were on a Wheaties box? Oh, great. <laughs> well, stay on the fucking Wheaties box, you know? A Wheaties box. You should be on an Oscar Mayer box. Yeah. I want some <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to be an actor. Who are some of the other people that are thinking of running? Who who besides Caitlyn Jenner? John Cox. Who? Yeah. John Cox, K-O-F. John Cox, another one. Jenner and John Cox? That's awesome. What? what, what, what just, <laughs> they run together. <laughs> they were screwing up 101 again today. All the old Trumpers are out there yelling for Randy Grover. Quaid. Some guy what, wait, 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 what did you say, John? Randy Quaid said he was thinking of running. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. As what? <laughs> Imagine that debate. <laughs> Well, you know, what's going to happen is whoever wins, I mean, it, let's say they get rid of Gavin Newsom and then one of the other people wins. It's going to be a Republican because there's no Democrat that's going to put his name there. Yeah. Okay. So really, really this is a Newsom's plot by the Republicans to wholehearted, yeah. wholesale. Uh, I don't think Newsom's going to lose it if the Democrats you know much, come out. You know how much they wait, paid wait, for those wait, signatures? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, what did you say, Kevin? I said if the Democrats come out, he won't lose that seat because there's 55 million people in this in this state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in there, and what almost one percent got them to recall. Wow. Yeah. One percent. Yeah. yeah. That leaves another 54 percent. You, know you know how much they paid for each one of those signatures? They paid like guys to go out and get those signatures. And, and for every signature, they were paying like five, six bucks. I Whatever. Just to sound like Donald Trump. Whatever. Been the taxpayers, I think, two hundred or four hundred million dollars for this. Yeah. 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 So like any other election, outside Safeway, you see ass. those guys collecting signatures. They're getting paid fucking six bucks a signature. They're getting paid. But if you're not if getting uh, paid. Newsom wins, they should take that four hundred million dollars from all the Republicans who voted for him. Yep. Why are they trying to get rid of them anyway? I don't understand. Day one. You? Right. Day one. I'm within, I'm within uh, Safeway over here. Right when he got elected, they had a table over there trying to get him. Well, that's because he went to dinner. Oh, he went to dinner. Yeah, at try that. and drive south on 101 at Cochrane Road every Friday night and you'll see. He went to dinner at that uh, restaurant. What was it? The uh, French Laundry. French Laundry. Yeah. yeah. Big, French big laundry. deal. You know. I mean, I'm laundry. glad he could get a seat there. I never can. Anyway, uh, hey, listen, there's there's a theme. Uh, well, this has been fun. Drug Only evening. Five minutes of politics. D over. Drug evening with Dr. Allen. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll give you your own show and put you on TV. I don't want my own show. Him. Give out drug <laughs> advice. Anyway, hey, thank I you. I don't want my own show. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. And thank you to uh, 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 Trucker yeah. Steve. Where are you tonight, Trucker Steve? Burnley, Nevada. You're still in Nevada. Wow. Beautiful Fernley. Yeah, and there's uh, yeah, and, there, nice. and there's uh, there's, a, there's his dog, and uh, 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 Charlie. Thank you for being here, Ray. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, thank you to John Larkin, and thank you to John Redshaw. Give, join us again, will you? Please, we love having Hello. you here. Ryan's wife. Alan, thank you so much. You've been fun tonight and putting I up with a lot. Be. Uh, uh, now it's we now watch Brian Neary getting a back rub. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I'll be right over. 
Uh, you, you're the luckiest guy in America, Brian. No kidding. You should count your blessings. Uh, thank you, Kevin. No, Appreciate hey, it. I got to hear it all night now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should have an SMC area cabinet party. And he just got hit by yeah, it too. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Brian's house. And Tony, yeah, thank you, thank you, Tony. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, mm -hmm. and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay. All righty. Thank you. And there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That was fun. Sorry for all that mess at the beginning when I was dropping my coffee. God. I hate it when my uh, coffee drops. Anyway, that's it for tonight. We'll uh, let you listen to the in intersection next with Jack Bishop. He's here. Uh, and he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live is the number to call. Uh, we'll see you again, what, on Monday we're going to do the 4 o'clock uh, pop-up show, and then on Tuesday night, back here at uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, very important fact, please, wear a mask, get a shot, uh, you know, just stay safe out there. Good night, everybody. Yeah.